know in most countries these things are free. Just saying. This is Jonathan with Travel Hacking Teachers. In today's episode, we are traveling from Chicago back to Dubai. While we're here in Chicago, we're gonna be exploring the airport lounges here in Terminal 5. We'll also be giving tips on how you can prepare for and survive a 14 hour nonstop flight with kids in tow. If you want to experience life as an expat family working overseas and learning travel hacking tips, do subscribe and hit that bell notification down below. And another way you can support the channel is give this video a thumbs up. While we're waiting in line, I want to talk about kind of the first, uh, the first topic up for debate, and that is suitcases versus duffels. Now, as you can see here, we utilize both. We've got some suitcases down here, our duffel bags here. Each one of our pieces of checked baggage weighs 50 pounds, just under 50 pounds. Now, the suitcases weigh 11 pounds, so that's eating up a ton of the 50, per, uh, the 50 pound limit. While these duffel bags weigh in just under two pounds each. So you're gonna get way more cargo uh, and liters um, available in the duffel bag. So as these suitcases get older and start to break down, we're gonna definitely be replacing them with the duffel bags, especially for the trips to the United States where we're just buying a bunch of uh, bulk goods, things like Costco trips, Target, all that. So that's what goes into these duffel bags here. So disadvantage of the duffel bags, however, is that they are oversized. So you're always gonna have to take them to the oversized baggage. But here in the O'Hare Airport where Emirates is, to oversized baggage is like 20 yards. So it's no problem at all. Okay. All right, bags are checked. We are heading now to the immigration. So we're gonna put that camera away. They're pretty tight on that kind of stuff. So we'll put the cameras away. We'll meet you on the other side and we'll uh, head over to the lounges. See you then. Once you make it through the security checkpoint, you'll find that Terminal 5 here in Chicago. It's a relatively small terminal and, and, and the layout, everything's pretty much clustered together. You have your typical suspects. You've got a lot of duty-free restaurants, just uh, merch, anything that you'd want to buy is probably available somewhere in here. Uh, Hudson's a great place for magazines and drinks and all that kind of stuff. But again, where we're going now is to the lounges. Now in Chicago, you have two choices for lounges on the Priority Pass program. One is the um, KLM French Airlines Lounge. That's the one we usually go to. It's got kind of a nice view of the, uh, of the landing strip and you can see planes take off and all that. And right across the way is another lounge and that's the Swiss Lounge. And both of these lounges, I mean, they're right next door to each other. They're located between gates M7 and M8. I'm heading there now and gonna try to get in. You do have to be aware that there are hours where they limit the priority pass program. So hopefully we'll have no problem getting in that way. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so we made it to the lounge here between M7 and M8. This is the Air France KLM lounge. And I noticed we got this sign right here. And what that sign says is that they're not letting in uh, Priority Pass or any of the other lounge uh, programs, such as Lounge Buddy, that kind of stuff. But when you see a sign like that, it's worth asking. We just went in there, even though the sign was up, and they said, no problem, they let us all in. So Kelly and the kids have seats. Uh, let's see what they're gonna get themselves up to. Okay, one of the nice things about this lounge are all the different options. Uh, you've got coffee, beer, you've got cold food, hot foods, uh, plenty of vegetarian and vegan options. So it's always worth coming to the airport early so you can grab uh, some food and get yourself a meal and it's all free part of the program. All right, so now I wanna talk about how we get into the lounges. The way we're able to get in is through Priority Pass, which is tied to different travel credit cards. Um, certainly the American Express Platinum card will give you Priority Pass access, as will the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Now, Kelly and I each have our own credit cards, which gives us access to the lounges and a companion. So Granite, Cedar, and Forest will always be getting it for free as long as Kelly and I maintain two credit cards that have the uh, memberships with them. Now, preparation for an uh, international trip starts long before you get to the airport. Behind me, Granite and Cedar are working on their little activity packs. And we bought these at Target yesterday for a dollar each. They're filled with crayons, workbooks, stickers, just all the things that they love to do while we're kind of in transit just waiting. So getting to the airport early, especially kind of that three hour uh, rule for us works really well. It gives us time to get in, get through immigration, get Granite and Cedar started on workbooks. We'll go hit the food here in a minute. Um, so you definitely want to give yourself plenty of time to get to the airport, have a meal, uh, have some drinks, have a coffee before you need to get onto your plane. So 
So this is a totally sold out flight. Uh, getting onto the plane early was key. We snagged our overhead uh, storage. And had we not gotten on the plane early, there's no way this would have been available. So uh, with this bulkhead row, it's important to get onto the plane when they call for people with children so you can snag these uh, early uh, nearby storage beds. Emirates Airlines immediately, we haven't even taken off yet, and they are hooking up the kids with all types of amenity kits. I think Cedar's gonna dig into hers. All right, Cedar, what do you got? I got pencils. I got stickers. Stickers. I got this too. Yeah. I got socks. Socks, cool. Uh, not only socks, Burj Khalifa socks. Sweet. Right, so we're officially in the air and the kids are plugged in. Kelly squeezed in a nap. So it's baby forest. So they just passed out these amenity kits for the adults. And it looks like I got a new toothbrush with toothpaste. That'll come in great just before landing. Uh, these cool little stickers, so if you, you know, when they bring the food around, you can uh, choose to be woken up for food or sleep through it. So I'm going to definitely wake up for the food. Got the eye patch. Also some socks. And of course some earplugs, so uh, that might help the passengers around us if Forrest uh, decides to cut loose. So I think uh, food's going to be coming up in just a little bit. Okay, so the food has arrived, and this is a very important tip if you're traveling, uh, especially with an infant. You need to stagger your meals. So on Emirates Airlines and these other international airlines, the kids will get their kids' meals first. And what we learned is they'll bring all the rest of the food out together, which basically stuck Kelly and I with food, the kids eating, and then no one to hold forest. So we, what we've learned is that if you order a special meal for one of the adults, they'll bring that out with the kids' food. So I'm free to watch Forrest. Now, thankfully, he's sleeping right now. But Kelly ordered the strict vegan meal, and uh, so that's brought out early with the kids' meals. So the, but by the time she's done is about the time my regular entree will arrive. So kind of the takeaway here is if you're flying with a uh, under two-year-old, a toddler, uh, you need to order one adult meal as a special order. Okay, so the timing was perfect. My meal just came out, and it looks like I've got some barbecue chicken, spinach, mashed potatoes, three bean salad, and a chocolate, kind of triple chocolate pudding for dessert. Uh, some red wine to go with it. And Kelly just finished. So again, this kind of staggered meal uh, is the best way to go when you have a under two. Uh, again, Forrest is still sleeping, so we had kind of got lucky with this. But ultimately, had he been awake, we could have done that baby hand off exchange. So uh, we'll get to dinner. So the next tip I want to offer up for comfort on international flights are the noise canceling headphones. These are Bose, and they work great to block all the ambient noise of the airlines. And Kelly and I will split these. Uh, right now, I'm about to catch some sleep. I have them turned on, but not attached to any of my devices. And Kelly will be on uh, baby duty. In a few hours, we'll switch. I'll hold for us and she'll wear the headphones. Uh, but you can get these now. This is kind of the last generation. So these sell for, I think, under $300. I'll link to them below down on Amazon if you want to take a look for yourself. But for anyone who does a lot of international travel, these uh, Bose, uh, or really any brand of noise canceling headphones, I think are a must have at this point. Uh, especially for us, we need to kind of get a few hours of sleep and then take over on baby duty. When sleeping now, a great time for me to stretch my legs. Uh, in the between the, the two economy uh, areas, in the back of the plane, there's always going to be snacks. You've got juice, water, uh, pretzels, all that. But behind me is uh, where the good stuff is. So we've got uh, fruit bars, chocolate, um, peppermint patties, and Twix bars. So on these uh, long haul international flights, I always keep the uh, kind of the open area stocked with snacks and drinks. Uh, so if you're getting hungry midway through, get yourself a snack. So we're back, it's now breakfast time. And again, our staggered meal approach has worked perfectly. Uh, Kelly, Granite Cedar's uh, meals came out early. Now the way you get a kind of a special request meal for adults, it's at the time of the booking. Uh, you go into your meal selections and it's defaulted as like regular meal. That's the one uh, meals when they come out all at the same time, which is no good when you're dealing with families with little kids. So go into that menu and select for the kids, the, chil the children's meals, 
and then for one of the adult travelers you got to select one of the special request meals and again there's many different options you can choose from kelly went with vegan meal and she's got it looks like kind of like uh spinach potatoes beans. yeah like a bean salad and a little tortilla down there so it's a nice meal and uh the kids are eating uh pancakes with kind of a berry commode Okay, so Kelly finished her meal. I'm going to start mine. I went with a vegetarian option for breakfast. And it's definitely Indian themed. I've got some veggie sambar, some vada, and looks uh, like pongal. So it's going to be pretty good eats, I think, for myself. And uh, kids are just kind of back in the movie zone. Um, I will say their headphones, uh, we picked those up at Target really cheap. I think they were like $15 each. They work a lot better than the ones that come just on the airplane. So uh, getting the kids some headphones as well is pretty good call. All right, so we made it through customs with that smart gate pass, super fast immigration process. When we walked up to the luggage uh, conveyor belt here, somebody had already pre-carted our uh, oversized luggage. That's awesome, we've never experienced that before. Super friendly here in Dubai with that. Uh, so to kind of conclude everything, I would say flying 14 hours internationally with the kids in tow is not that bad of an experience. Um, if you do those few tips, uh, it helps along the way. For example, getting the kids those little activity packs from Target, super good uh, investment there, like a dollar each. Good quality headphones for the adults, reasonably quality headphones for the kids. And pre-order the special adult meal, that'll go a long way. And ultimately, uh, you know, 14 hours isn't too bad. So if you want to experience life as an expat family, what it's like to work overseas and to learn travel hacking tips, do subscribe and give a thumbs up to the buttons down below and we'll see you in the next episode.